Hey, happy February 28th, everybody. Good Big morning. Badger Radio. Broadcasting live out of the Twin Cities out of the Peacedale Studios. The pre-race edition. The pre Thank you. The pre-race edition. I am uh, I'm about to become an ultra runner. Post marathoning. Yes, I'm I'm about to become that elitist type who, you know, thinks um, oh, you know, marathons. Yeah, that's 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 a that's <laughs> a great warm up. That's a great training little, run. Those cute little runs. Because this weekend I'm gonna run a thirty one mile race. It's also called a fifty K. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never been a fan of the of the metric system. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? <laughs> I mean, it probably I'm not wouldn't surprised. surprise you. There you go, it wouldn't surprise you, <laughs> of course. And it's not just my thing against the. Do you remember in school how they the always used to say we have to learn this because any minute it's going to change? This and is then exactly about why. About twelve a fan. years of that, I'm like, what? Yeah, they yeah. Because in second, third, fifth grades, yeah. all in that They're period, like it was. I mean, this. So this would have been for me. I was born in 1966. So I don't know when I was ten. This is mid 70s. Yeah. Same. Everything was going to be the the, yeah. the, the the metric system. You had Somebody's going to gonna swoop in and yeah. change everything, and so get it right. right. And look, it probably would have made more sense to have everything work off zeros and just move that decimal point. Yeah. But it was now, as a, then as, a, as an early teenager, then a young adult, and now as a, a crotchety old middle-aged man, I've realized this is the first place that I realized the education system was full of it <laughs> and was lying to me. <laughs> That's when I, I really I go. Th- this is where it all started. When yeah. they were like, "Oh, seriously, you you're gonna have to do this." So you don't I think they really t- believed that I, when they well, said it? Whether or not they lied with intention, mm-hmm. or they lied just by oh, overstatement. Now you sound like my kids. They're yeah. always accusing me of lying. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is very third grade, isn't it? When you say something that's not true and you call someone a liar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. every second I live yeah. with this. Yeah. 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 Well, well, that's how some of us feel about people when they talk about the Bush administration. But we'll leave that right there. It's difference between being wrong and lying. It's all about intentionality. Yes. So I don't know if these people were lying mm-hmm. or wrong, but I felt lied too. Yes. I felt like I bought it. And it this is wasn't really just an excuse for you to say, "Oh, that education is all stupid." No, right? I'm not against <laughs> education. I just wish there would. I just wish there would have been and some a greater, little more thoughtfulness about what they humility. stuffed in their I've, heads. I, I have realized there there are two things that I still live with a great love. Well, not three from from last week's or two weeks ago's conversation from from my childhood that had to do with school. One was that Valentine's Day stuff. Mm-hmm. I'd forgotten about that until Valentine's Day came yeah. up. Yeah. Um, my. Um, my disdain for libraries. <laughs> I know it's deep. I, it's very I deep. Have, I have connected it back to why I don't like libraries. Why? I've, I've, you I figured it that, out? Yes, library fines. Oh, the fines. Library fines. I would, yeah. I would constantly be late to return my library book, and there's yeah. no one in my life who was more shame-based and rude than our librarians. Really? Oh, they're the worst. Oh. First of all, always telling you to be quiet. Yeah. Constantly telling you... To be quiet. Yes. Which I swear to, to God, Unbelievable that's why that I, anybody could ever tell you I run to be a church, quiet. That I run a church like I do now on a radio <laughs> yeah, show. There's yeah, probably no doubt about you're it. You're always just, telling me to be quiet at church. Just with subtle looks and glances. Subtle. E- like, talk about evil stares with knives. Oh, I roll. <laughs> well, Victoria, that's just when you stand out in the other room and yell. <laughs> I but I swear to. to you, this is well. But see, how does that feel when someone horrible, horrible, when someone comes and says, "Shut up," essentially, right? You take yes. the things coming out of your I mouth agree. and close them down. It's yes. the worst. It is. Last night I was at synagogue, literally, and really? listening listening to a presenter uh, talk about uh, Israel and, and Palestine and the two state solution, blah blah. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> there was a confirmation, not a confirmation. There was a, a Tama Torah class of some variety, or uh, mm-hmm. you know, a, a sitting a kid sitting in front of me. There's a bunch of people in this place, and we're yeah. r- surrounded by these kids. And the, one of their leaders was next to me, and the other one the in front. And they're just constantly poking these kids, like, "Be quiet!" Shut yeah, up, I mean, these kid. poor kids. I, I don't know. know how old they are. Maybe yeah. seventh grade or something. They're just. Yeah. I mean, they have no. They have no idea what this guy's blabbing on about. Yeah, up there. they could care less. So I mean, I really, I really had empathy for them. So that's why you hate libraries. I, that's I've, the it, real reason. Well, it came back to me in a conversation the other day that, um, wow, yeah, somebody was talking about having returned something to a, an adult, having returned something to a library at a university where mm-hmm. she works, mm-hmm. and the librarian like wouldn't accept it because there was a missing tag. Oh. And, and it got us into this whole conversation, and it, it dawned on me, kind of, I mean, this emotion came back about how horrible I felt at Meadowbrook Elementary School. I'm with so those sorry libra- for oh, you. Yeah, I don't get it. 
No, I'm taking I, it out now on library, so it's, I've it's had the all best fine. librarians. Oh, the on. best. No, I have. Yeah, that's why you ended up in literature, and I ended up on the radio. Carrying people, <laughs> our librarians, Shh. helping Shh. bring me books. The worst sound ever. Well, I, I Shh. I'll do boys, it to my kids. Boys, yeah. Shh. this is not a place and where you the do wor- that. This <laughs> is a place where you take in things. Because oh, they were trying to protect the, the little me's. You know, worst. up in the corner. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because they're because they're still fighting against their experience in gym class. Yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. Shall we talk about the shame of gym class? <laughs> All right. So okay. So so that's the thing about libraries. What were we talking about though? Just a minute ago. How did how did I get into this? There's two things oh, that I recall. You were talking about the things you realized: libraries, Valentine's Day, and, and there's the a th- third thing. Yeah, the third thing, which is the thing I wanted to be talking about for the okay. love. Okay. And these are all things that you realized on the radio. Back to my elementary school days. It's metric system. The metric system. Thank you. So anyway, I'm running a 50K. Yes, that's it. This is when I, the first time I felt lied to. Shamed in the library and lied to in the uh, science class. Well, maybe not the science class. I, don't, I think it was like, I don't even know what class. Every class they so told us we had to learn the metric system. <laughs> I know. Every one of them. And the, like the other day, I've got this water bottle right here that I'm drinking yeah. out of. Now I'm doing my, I'm doing my, my, my Rubio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm reaching over for my water bottle. Oh my gosh! Look at so that I have thing. A, I have a gigantic <laughs> bottle here, right? And I suppose that's and the right size for you. Well, no, it's just one that I like um, refill my water bottles with during oh, during yeah. long, long runs. And In but it's car. also the one that I, I have with me during the course of a day to say I need to consume this, this amount of water. water because if I have to do something like. Just how, how many, many glasses, glasses of water did I drink in a day? So I have one. That's a good idea. Small. But how much? How much is in this? One hundred and one point four fluid ounces, or three quarts, three point five four quarts. Uh, no, sorry, three quarts plus five point four ounces, or three liters. So it's yeah. really just a three liter thing. And I was trying to figure out how many gallons it is. Yeah. I had to use my thing on my phone, I know. like converter on my phone. <laughs> I, I had to say, Siri. I hate, how many? hate it when they don't have all of the information on there. Yeah. So all that to say, I'm running a race this weekend <clears throat> that they call a 50K. Is this going to heal you but with a metric also, system? No, it's going to make it worse <laughs> because here's why. How long is a marathon? 26.2. Miles. Mm-hmm. What race am I running this weekend? A 50K. Yes. What race am I running in a month? A 50 mile. Yeah. So you're constantly bouncing back and forth between the kilometer no measurements consistency. and the and the and the mile. So anyway, I'm running a 31 mile race. Yes, that's a nice number. It's a nice number, but people will often say, if I say as I have, um, hey, I can't. No, sorry, I can't do anything this weekend. I'm going to Iowa to run a 31 mile race. People say. 31, What's a 31 miles. Mile Who has race? a 31 well, mile it's race? It's no more weird than 26.2 for a No, not at all any more weird. It's not, but it's just it's, every... it's just unusual. Somebody yeah. would say, "I've never heard of a 31." Oh, it's a fi- oh, it's a 50k. Yeah. So anyway, I'm running this little 50k race, and um, I'm 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 rather nervous. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've realized I haven't run a lot of races. I've run two marathons, two half marathons, a 5k, um, mm-hmm. uh, this kind of thing. So I haven't run a lot of races. Right. Um, and I get the little uh, pre, f- few days ahead of time nerves running mm-hmm. about, about this. And in this case, it's going to be cold. It's yes. going to be below 20 degrees when Just we start. It's terrible and probably for 27 you. when you Especially because I don't know if listeners know your hands and feet get. My hands and feet get painfully cold. Painfully cold. And when you're out for five hours or six hours, whatever this, this is going to take me, mm-hmm. you, you, what one has to prepare for these things. Like you, yeah. you, you'll sweat. You can't be running with sweaty clothes on. Right. For five hours and not feel the effect of that. So I want to change clothes. Now I have to be packing like, like right. I do on my long runs. Yep. Just a lot of work. Just yep. a lot of work. So I got a lot. I got a lot yep. going on in the old noggin these days. Yeah, getting and everything foods. well and traveling and, it, and, and traveling and getting someone to ride with me and all that. Yep. Uh, and um, and then this is really all just tra- training, testing, um, uh, practicing for a longer run. So then it's got um, data collection. I have to get data. I have to. I have to take in data, and I want that. You, know, so. you need to take notes. Anyway. <laughs> You should have your phone with little I auditory take, well, notes. Well, that's not a bad idea. I should find somewhere that to take notes. That isn't a bad idea. Maybe I will turn that on. That's say, what how I'm am for. I feeling? How, how am I? <laughs> shh. Shh. <laughs> Let me talk now. Shh. Yeah, the kids. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you can check out a conference room if you need. Oh, the worst. <laughs> Honestly. Hey, uh, it's February 28th, and we all know what that means. No. Last I day d- of the Pope. That all it did starts today. Well, the equal, big at eight. I think it might conference. be now. I, th- I think he. I think, going. He, I think he might be done now. I don't know. It's ten ten in central. Uh, mm-hmm. Ten ten a.m. Central time. 
I don't and know what, I don't know what time it is. And then they start remote. convening to pick somebody, but do they actually pick the person today, or well, are we they pick be the person? They oh, we're popeless. Well, yeah, but w- w- it w- which you know, for the first time in six hundred years, you're popeless with a guy who used to be the pope, who's no longer the pope. Yeah, this is all confusing. I found myself thinking, do they have a retirement package? Like, how oh, is he going to leave? Did you see that leave? Saturday Night Live skit about that? No, I didn't. Yeah, like I guys can't selling the po- guys selling the pope. You know, like sitting with the pope in your pope retirement. How do you? You know, <laughs> I know. Like, you're, like he's the only it's guy. It's not like they have. Yeah, <laughs> there's, it's right. not like they have a little condo yeah. for retired. No, popes he's the <laughs> he's the only guy. I don't know what they're going to do about that. I don't know how that's yeah. all going to go. I have no idea how that how that's going to play out. But I just you know, I'm still bothered by it. Yes, so I don't. I don't get it. <clears throat> I don't. I don't see how you just get to stop. Stop doing a job that was a that was some, some ontological position. Like you should just spontaneously I did get a combust. Nice, I did get a nice uh, a nice note from from one of the listeners though, who uh, who wanted to to assure me that that infallibility is not a constant state of popeness. It's only so everything occasional. the pope does and says is not infallible. Only when the pope releases a particular kind of an edict that is a particular teaching of the church. So he has to say, this is one of my infallible Yeah, there's, claims. there's a process by which that becomes a, 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 a official teaching of the church. Mm-hmm. So, you know, him you know, talking about something or just sort of going around. Yeah. Um, it, my, my problem was never infallibility. My problem has always been apostolic succession. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how someone gets to unravel that. Yes. I don't know how you get to hold it and then say, eh, I'm done with it. I'm yeah. going to let it go. It seems if there truly was some ontological thing that has happened, and I'm sure Catholics could tell me that. No, I've, yeah. I've, I've misunderstood it. Maybe we can ask our Because guests. there's no doubt that people our have misunderstood Catholicism. could help us. Yes, we are going to have, we're gonna have two, two, two gals on today, uh, Amy and Amy Andrews and Jessica Griffith, who've written a book called uh, Love and Salt. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't. I, don't, I still don't know where the title comes from. Do you know that? Or should we ask yeah, them that? Yeah, I got to that part, even though I didn't finish the book. Okay, well let's ask them. Let's 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 use yeah, that. Yeah, they should the talk about that. It's good for good the introduction. Um, how was how how was your week going, Victoria? Oh boy, you don't usually ask me that. It's great. I'm having a good writing week. Oh, yeah, you having yeah. a good writing week. Why did, why did you say oh jeez? You surprised me. That I don't ask you that. Well, not usually on the air. I just wasn't ready. <coughs> I didn't have a thought. I didn't have something pithy to say. It's fine. I'm having a fine week. Do you Thanks. prepare pithiness? No, is, I is, don't, is, is actually. Pithiness? I think that's I misunderstanding <laughs> the nature of pithiness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I do not prepare. So you're having a good writing week? You're getting some writing I done? I am having a good writing mm-hmm. week. So I'm ha- I've been writing some poetry, so that's good. I am mm-hmm. ha- happy about that. I sent out some How, how are you doing with this winter business? Is winter hanging hanging yeah, heavy? Yeah, it's People interesting. People are starting to complain about I, it you now. You know, I'm a I'm real stoic about winter. Oh. I am a Minnesotan, mm-hmm. born and bred, mm-hmm. and I just have deep, deep, deep feelings about you should not complain about winter. You just put up with it, mm-hmm. and you choose to live here. And so, you know, that's some of the things I think when people complain about winter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's that going for you? <laughs> feel good? Feel good it's burying all that deep down? You feel good <laughs> stuffing that down below the surface? Typical repressed yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Is there a winter. pill for that? Yeah, sure, it's fine. Do that. Just stuff yeah. it down. Tell yourself you deserve <laughs> it because you chose it. Um, running in the winter has helped me mm-hmm. embrace some of, helped me to appreciate some of what people who, I don't Spend really like outside. being outside. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't really, <laughs> I'm not really an outside person. I'm not somebody mm. who says, oh, yes, let's embrace. I s- think I should, but mm. I don't really. Mm. When it comes down to it, I don't. I don't like camping, but I do it. I tell mm. myself I should like it, but I I don't. Mm. So I hope there's a therapist listening. They might send an email <laughs> to you and say, you could spend a little yeah. time with us about <laughs> living in that Yeah, I don't really know what I'm confessing here. At any rate, running the desire to mm-hmm. run and enjoying it outside has helped me appreciate yes. outside. But the cloudiness, this has been a particularly overcast winter. It has been it's more been gray, it's been gray. And, it, and slippery. And not so just shades of gray. Not, no, of well, no, not at way. all. We're not making any kind of commentary on that. <coughs> I don't even know what that book's about. I think it's like softcore porn, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's a steamy romance. I haven't actually read it because my friends who read romances say don't bother with that one. They know I only read them occasionally, and oh. I have to read ones that they recommend. So. Okay. So oh, you you, you have it. a supplier. You you have a, ro- a romance. I, do. Rom- I have a, a romance book, supplier because I'll read one every every so often. It's not my favorite <laughs> genre, but 
That but yeah, they know what I they know what I go for, and they they give them to me. <coughs> Are you going to be putting up any of your poems on the Doug Paget Radio Write On blog? Well, I just did. Yes. Well, tell us about that. Two days ago. You tell us. About I that. I put up a poem. I w- it was in response to Peter. Ra- what? It was like <laughs> I'm, it was like I'm playing by myself over here. That was all a setup for you to tell <laughs> us about it. It's I unbelievable. Just, I thought maybe you didn't know oh, that I did it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did it. I no. just See, here's how it could have got. <laughs> so you could have put any of that up. As a matter of fact, I do have one up right now. And it's yes. up, 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 up. So it was kind <laughs> of a fun poem because usually, uh, or for a while, I've <laughs> been writing hilarious. long narratives uh-huh. about women in the Bible. Like I'm working on a narrative right now mm. about the bleeding woman. Mm, I nice. have been working on it since the fall. So I've been working on it for some time off and on. But I've been writing these narratives, so it was kind of fun to write something l- lyrical and short and mm-hmm. really delve into the words. But it was it's f- it's dedicated to Peter Rollins because he inspired me oh. so deeply. And I was thinking a lot about when we were talking about what do you do if you get to a point where you ha- are aware of idolatry in your life, the way you might set up God or other things mm-hmm. as something you're striving toward to make you whole, and and that that process is deeply unsatisfying, that you will never get to wholeness by striving, at th- that Peter argues that the joy of the crucifixion and the exp- gospel really is that being finding joy in the midst of where we are right now, not mm, striving not towards else. some. So so once you embrace that, then what? Like how mm. I've been thinking about what cultivates <coughs> that experience in me the ability to live in the present moment and I was writing a lot about poetry and what it meant to me thinking I would blog about that but then found myself using a poem to try to get at that hmm. so it's kind of an ours poetica it's kind of like a what poetry is kind of an ours poetica me. yeah i kind of really <laughs> well that'd be great i'd love to hear an ours poetica <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> it's up there and I kept changing it after I first posted it. I hit pulled the trigger a little too soon. Sorry for the gun analogy there. Well, that's, <laughs> how <you gun laughs> own, that's how you gun owners are. No, I'm no longer a gun owner. Uh-huh. That's uh, how you previous gun owners are. Yeah. I was 13, Doug, and my grandpa it gave it to two me. Weeks ago. It was two weeks I know, ago. My parents oh, found it in their that. basement. Oh, yeah, yeah. So head know. over to the Doug Padgett Radio <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> website at Doug Padgett Radio. So yeah, if you read it after I first posted it, right it it's better now. The first two <laughs> hours after I posted it, I kept <laughs> revising it. I think I'm done now. I don't know. You never know. You might want to check back and read it every day just mm-hmm. to see what I've done with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> really? It's like it's like is is there a name for like a an, uh, a recurring a, a poem with constant updates? <laughs> know, is, yeah. it, is it like a, like know. an auto update? Usually updater? you try to do that before. I mean, Walt Whitman did that his whole life with Leaves of Grass. He kept revising oh and really? changing. So it's always a big in every edition they'll talk about which point Oh. It's published. The people usually That's publish nice the early, earliest one. I mean, wouldn't it have been nice had we done that with with other like um like like notions of philosophy and theology and and all that that it was just yeah. like a, there it's was con- it was a wiki yeah it was just a constantly updating thing and like now we don't say that that way anymore instead of yeah getting locked in well it's interesting like for people who study a particular theologian or something mm-hmm. sometimes if they look at the trajectory of their thought mm-hmm. over time and how it does change mm-hmm. whether people want to accept that or realize it yep. or not and you can read a particular book I'm sure that will probably happen with you and people who look at your books over time because sure. you're willing and open to change. You're more Well, the aware arc of, of a different, of, of an idea, that's uh, but to go back and to change that one. Oh, well, there's that too. That's yeah, you could go back, idea. yeah. yeah you I like that idea. Hey, <coughs> I've got a little thing on taking the Lord's name in vain to oh, borrow you the do? King James. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, a preacher's rant <gasps> in just a minute. I'm, I'm going to bring on.